get off the grassy knolls for everybody to come to the center and then to me. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Northeast Premier Division Contest. It's the first year we've had Northeast, so this is our premier table topics and international speech contest. I am Ann Johnson. And I'm that we could have the best speaking space available for the contestants, so bear with me if I have to shuffle back and forth a little bit. All of the contestants and all of the functionaries have been briefed. Please refrain from leaving the audience during any speakers during the speech contest. Also, so you thought you were going to get away without me saying it. And my home club is waiting for me to plug this up greatly, but I've got a new one for you. Please take out your cell phones and put them on airplane mode because we're all going to have a fabulous flight together during this contest. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and if your airplane mode includes the vibrator on ring, please turn that off as well because sometimes that is just as distracting to members of the audience and the speakers as being on ring. I have the distinct pleasure this evening of welcoming our District 30 dignitaries. We have with us our regional advisor, Dickmar Wagonknecht.
one pay me to do it, but I'm waiting for everyone to get out their writing instruments. And I'm also getting myself ready to say the names. <laughs> Contestant number one, Jar Sarkalis. Contestant number two, Latanya Schwal. They're on the oh, agenda, okay. if you would like to get an agenda. Contestant number three, Ron Eichholzer. Number four, Rebecca James. Number five, Eurydice Ori. And number six, Kevin Henderson. <coughs> Is there anyone who needs clarification or a repeat of the speaking order? Number one, John Sarkis. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Are you a lion, a tiger, a bear, and why? Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Are you a lion, a tiger, or a bear, and why? Contestant number one. John Sarkola. It's about helping other people. It's about loving your spouse, your chosen other. It's about your children. It's about honoring your parents, even when they make you crazy. It's about having courage to do things you fear. It's about standing up when nobody else wants to stand up. It's about using that, that that in the Wizard of Oz he didn't have, but I have. Now to see me naked, I look like a bear, big and hairy, furry, <laughs> and it's kind of scary. But anyway, we won't go to that image, because the lion, he sits, he thinks a lot, he surveys all he sees, and yet he calmly can control a situation with just the mastery of who he is. The lion comes out and proudly stands there. And you don't know if he's going to pounce or if he's just going to move on. I am the lion. And I am the loving lion.
Tanya Schwal. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Are you a lion, a tiger, or a bear, and why? Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Are you a lion, a tiger, or a bear, and why? Contestant number two, the Tanya Schwab. Contestant number three, Ron Eichholzer. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Are you a lion, a tiger, or a bear, and why? Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Are you a lion, a tiger, or a bear, and why? Contestant number three, Ron Eichholz. Madam Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters and guests, that one's a toughie. If you were to read my horoscope, you would say I'm a lion. I'm a Leo, born August 10th. But that would mean that I'm pretty aggressive. I'm not that guy. I'm more of a guy who's, I have to say it, it's more of a 
pussycat. I love my cat at home. Lays across my chest, feel him purring. I can relate to that. A lion, not so much. A bear. A bear is another aggressive animal. I'm just going to say it. I feel bad for her lack of. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not that either. A tiger. Well, that gets me back into pussycat territory, right? I'm, I got to tell you, I'm a parent, I'm a husband, and it's very difficult for me to let that get out with my kids or my wife. Sure, it does. I always feel bad about that. I always feel like with my kids, the best way to work with them when they're feeling grouchy is to go over to them and embrace them and help them to feel that they're loved. We all could use that sometimes, and I just feel like that's the thing to do. I had a colleague today, spent a long time in the bathroom, ladies' bathroom. I couldn't really go in there, but she did step out, blood coming out of her nose like crazy. I gotta go to immediate care. So I took her over there, and I could tell that what she really needed was just somebody to help her to stop from panicking. Lion, tiger, bear. I think it was a pussy cat. And I'm gonna have to say, that's just me. And I'm stuck with it. Madam Contest Chair. Contestant number four, Rebecca James. <coughs> Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Are you a lion, a tiger, or a bear, and why? Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Are you a lion, a tiger, or a bear, and why? Contestant number four, <coughs> Rebecca James. Thank you. 
Alex. Contestant number five, Eurydice Orari. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Are you a lion, a tiger, or a bear, and why? Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Are you a lion, a tiger, or a bear, and why? Contestant number five, Eurydice Oari. <laughs> Lions, tigers, and bears. Oh my. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and distinguished guests, if you asked me that question a few months ago, I would have to think about it for a long time. But I can tell you right now that I am definitely 100% a lion. And I'll tell you why. I have a niece. Her name is Catherine. She's going to be two in April. And she loves reading. Catherine loves looking at animals and learning about them and their different sounds. But she has this one book called Lionel Learns to Listen about Lionel the Lion. I am like Lionel. Here's what happens in the story. Lionel's mother tells him, before you go outside, I want you to put on your helmet and your pads in order to go skating. Does Lionel listen? No, he does not listen. And on the second page of the story, all we see is Lionel with tears running down his eyes because he did not listen to his mother. My, my niece looks at this, and she actually starts to cry a little bit. She's very compassionate about this lion with the tears coming down his eyes. But when we turn to the next page, Lionel listens. He puts on his helmet, he puts on his pads, and then he goes out to go skating again. Why am I a lion? Because I have learned to listen to good advice. When my parents say something, I may think, what are they talking about? You're my parents. But I learned to listen because they know what they're talking about because of their years of experience. When I go to a Toastmasters meeting and I get great feedback from people like you, I listen because I know it's going to take me further when I make my next speech. <coughs> I am definitely a lion. I am just like Lionel the lion who has learned to listen and pay attention to amazing advice.
Kevin Henderson. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Are you a lion, a tiger, or a bear, and why? Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Are you a lion, a tiger, or a bear, and why? Contestant number six, Kevin Henderson. Contest master, dignitaries, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests, I am a bear. Now, how do I know that? Well, I know that because last week I spent the entire week in San Diego, and we did the first day, the safari park. The second day, SeaWorld. Didn't really have any impact on lions and tigers and bears there. And the third day, and the fourth day, the San Diego Zoo. So I had an opportunity to see lions. They're pretty smart. They just lay around all day long. <laughs> Especially the males. They can lay around and get all the females to do all the work for them. That's pretty smart. Hmm. Did I pick the wrong animal? <laughs> Tigers. Also pretty cool animals. They're also very smart. We saw two, and they were just laying around. It's pretty hot. <laughs> Bears. I know I'm a bear because of all the animals that we saw in the safari park and the zoo. They seem the most industrious. In fact, we had a great opportunity to see three of the 12 panda bears that are in the United States. And one of those was the only panda cub outside of China, in the outside of China period. And we got to see it on its very first day out in an exhibit. And this little panda, as little as it was, came out and just climbed right up in a tree and stayed there just watching everybody watch it. So I had an opportunity, because my daughter likes pandas so much, to get to see the pandas not once, but twice, both days, and we got our picture taken on a green screen, and I got to hold a little digital panda cub. <laughs> so, per the best picture that I had coming back from vacation last week, I am a bear, and that is a panda bear from the San Diego Zoo. Madam Toastmaster.
On this Toastmaster, we have all the ballots. right now on that program to mark my calendar. <laughs> because it's on the back of your program. <laughs> well, here's the thing that's so exciting. That you're probably not going to know from reading your program. Two people from this room are going to be there giving contests to win a trophy. <laughs> and heard Craig Valentine. How many of you were there? Show me how many. Come on, I know you guys were secretly there in spirit. <laughs> and if you didn't hear, he was fantastic. In fact, it was the first time ever that we had people sitting on the floor in the aisle because every chair in that large Holiday Inn was taken. Every single one. In the hotel, not just in our room. They were carting them in from everywhere. And the office staff was very mad because we were <laughs> but while he was there mesmerizing us with his great speaking skills, we learned that he actually, although he won the world championship in Chicago, by his own admission, he was not a good speaker. Imagine how terrifying that was to find it out. <laughs> he really wasn't that good, according to him. And in fact, he told us he had a coach. He had a coach that he paid for thousand dollars a day to learn how to be a good speaker. How many of us would want to pay four thousand dollars a day? Well look, no one. no one. And Craig told us his secret. Patricia Fripp, his coach, trained him 
how to be a fantastic speaker. And taught him how to create all of those CDs and books that we like to buy so that we can learn from him. But he really learned it from her. So now, 7 a.m. seems pretty exciting because she's going to be there to give all of us who have earned the breakfast a chance to hear her secret tips and tricks. And in fact, you still have time to turn in your educational award before April 19th and earn your ticket to the breakfast. <laughs> and most importantly, to scope. Holiday in. <laughs> but that's not all that will be here. She'll be speaking at 7 a.m. at the Achievers Breakfast, at 9 a.m. for the keynote for those of us who like to sleep in, <clears throat> for those of us who stayed out two nights at the jacuzzi in the pool. <laughs> Just kidding. But seriously, then we're going to have a whole series of great workshops from other esteemed Toastmasters during the day. And finally, at 1 o'clock, right immediately after lunch, Patricia's going to come back and do an hour and a half direct coaching, pulling people out of the audience to up on stage, where she's going to coach them in front of all of us. But no need to feel scared. It won't be that bad. <laughs> It'll be fun and exciting, and so we hope that you will join us for those things and get the enjoyment out of Patricia Fripp, because after all, that would have been $12,000 in coaching for three different sessions. <coughs> but there's one more thing that's really even more exciting than that. How do you top that? You're probably wondering. Wow, look at all these great things. I know, right? I get to go to Skokie. I can earn soggy bacon and limp breakfast or whatever. I can sit through hours of fantastic learning content and hear Patricia Fritz for only paying my club membership. But in the evening, we have one of our perennial favorites, a fantastic accredited speaker, Johnny Campbell. And he's going to be speaking over dinner. So you will get, as you saw on the flyer, two amazing speakers for one little price of your club membership and your club paying the dues. So I hope that this was a good sell job, and you can help reinforce my presentation by letting me know that you cannot wait to get back and jump in your car and go to Skokie on April 26th and 27th by giving me a rousing round of applause. Just around, just around to the side. You'll see signs. Exactly. 